these faces peering through the forest properly belong halfway around the world. They are native to only one place, Madagascar, off the coast of Africa. These are lemurs, and their home now is the Duke Lemur Center. For over 40 years, dedicated to studying and preserving these fascinating animals. How the world got lemurs is a bit of an evolutionary mystery. The theory goes that eons ago, a cyclone swept across the island of Madagascar from east to west, bounced off the coast of Africa, and in the process tore off chunks of forest. It then reversed course and carried animals and plants west to east, back to Madagascar. One such animal was the ancestral lemur, now cut off from the continent's evolutionary cycles. So we suspect that something like that happened about 60 million years ago and it had that ancestral lemur on it and it landed on Madagascar and then the rest is history. So it's an incredibly diverse group of mammals that all derive from that single common ancestor. While lemurs lived on Madagascar for millions of years, the arrival of man some 2,000 years ago signaled disaster for the ecology. Slash and burn farming destroyed habitat. Hunting for survival destroyed animal populations. Sadly, most of the island's 70 species of lemurs are threatened or endangered today. The Duke Lemur Center was formed to study lemurs after it became clear that massive educational and scientific efforts were needed to help preserve the species. And it became clear what an amazing chance this was to study evolutionary biology. All right, guys, keep on coming down this way. People who are interested in behavioral ecology or comparative physiology started understanding that these animals are really interesting and that there are all kinds of genetic anomalies and lemurs that are very interesting and we don't really, to this day, understand. You only have to see a few lemurs at the center to grasp their amazing diversity. This is a pair of blue-eyed black lemurs. The males are black and then the females of this species are the reddish orange blonde color. Really interesting about blue-eyed lemurs is they ha are one of the few primates that have true blue eyes. They're very female dominant. For instance, when we come in and we feed the females, very rarely let the males get much food. Ringtails are probably the most well-known of all lemurs. They're very territorial. They're also considered more ground-dwelling lemurs. The ringtails in general in the wild live in pretty large groups that they call troops. The red ruff lemurs are really unique. They have large litter sizes. They can have up to six babies in one litter. These are one of the larger body lemurs that they have in Madagascar. <laughs> that was a very good opportunity to hear their alarm call. It has the potential to scare away predators either in the air or things on the ground. These are cockerel shafox. They live out here in a natural habitat enclosure at the Duke Lemur Center. And I'm actually giving them peanuts Peanuts are, are like enrichment for them because they're soft enough that they can't get into them, but they can't just eat them right away. They have to actually work for them. They have very long legs in proportion to their bodies. They can leap up to 30 feet between trees vertically. The shafox get a, a certain kind of chow. It's called folivore chow. They get vegetables. So onions, green beans, cucumbers, broccoli. They eat mostly leaves while they're out. Some lemur species are nocturnal, like these eye eyes. 
The center has special enclosures that reverse day for night, so the eye eyes can be active when the scientists are awake too. A lot of diurnal species travel in large groups because it helps them avoid predators, whereas these guys, the best way to avoid predators is by being quiet and being elusive. But they do definitely have a complex social network. Eye eyes have such large brains in relation to their body size, so they're very intelligent. This poses some problems in captivity, especially in regards to enrichment and other things that we try and do for them to keep them from being too bored. Another center goal is to help with breeding programs designed to bring endangered lemurs back from the brink of extinction and to provide animals for other facilities around the world dedicated to educating the public about them. And then there's the public outreach, getting people over here to see these wonderful animals and hopefully, you know, change some minds about the importance of biodiversity and why it matters. After meeting a few lemurs, you can easily see why they evoke such strong responses in humans. Lemurs have a thumb a lot like we do, and they can touch I think they're just them. charmed. You know, I really think that's it. You know, I'm a scientist and I think very rationally and, and uh, they're fascinating to me as a biologist, but I, I have to admit, you know, there's also this emotional response that you have to them. They're just beautiful and charming and exquisite. So, and people really react to that.